President Trump says he hopes his next Supreme Court pick will serve for at least the next four decades. After Justice Anthony Kennedy announced yesterday he is retiring. Time Magazine's cover out this morning shows the court's remaining eight justices with the headline, quote, it's Trump's court now. This will be the second Supreme Court justice the president has appointed in his less than two years in office. Leonard Leo is executive vice president of the Federalist Society, a group of conservative lawyers who want judges to interpret the law as it it's written. He advises President Trump on judicial nominations and helped the White House create its list of possible Supreme Court nominees. And he is here today with us. Thanks a lot for being here. Good morning. So before we talk about this potential, this list of potential nominees, I want to talk about Justice Kennedy and your take on his impact on the court. Wow, he was a devoted public servant on the court for over 30 years and he had an enormous impact in helping to shape the court's jurisprudence across so many different areas. I think though at the very core of what he believed in was the idea that the limits on government power contained in our Constitution are the best way of preserving human dignity and that a court has a real duty to enforce those. All right. Have you spoken to the president since this announcement? I talked to him yesterday afternoon after he met with Justice Kennedy and the president had a great time talking to the justice and uh, uh, has great respect for him. So what can you tell us about the president's thought process moving forward? This list He's familiar with the list because he's gone through this once before. Um, any ideas who he likes and who he doesn't like, who he's looking at? Well, uh, he hasn't made that decision yet, right. uh, but this list was his idea. And he said three things at the very outset that he wanted. People who were extraordinarily well qualified, people who were, who were in his words, not weak, courageous, independent, and then people who were going to, in his words, interpret the Constitution the way the framers meant it to be. Right. And the list is really a compendium of the best and brightest in the country who share that, that perspective and have those qualities. There is a concern, though, um, that the Federalist Society is a particularly conservative group that is looking for particularly conservative, maybe conservative activist judges to put on the Supreme Court. How do you respond to the people who say that? You have, what you have to understand about the conservative legal movement these days is it's not about conservative results or liberal results or particular political results. It's about finding people who are going to interpret the laws it's written and who are going to understand that those structural protections in our Constitution are really what preserve freedom and dignity in our nation. And so it's not about outcomes. Uh, it's hard to know, it's hard to remember that in today's culture where we're always talking about results and outcomes, but that's not really what it's about for us. But it certainly seems like at least uh, some of the recent decisions that the Supreme Court has made it definitely divided along ideological lines. Well, you know, look, if you look at the history of the recent court, uh, there are lots of decisions where conservatives get divided uh, and where the conservatives and liberals do. Um, and Justice Kennedy was very much someone who, who sort of followed his, own, followed his own drummer on the court. He was certainly helping to create a, a conservative jurisprudence in areas like gun rights and Citizens United and federalism and separation of powers. And of course he parted company with conservatives on the LGBT same-sex marriage issue and on and on abortion, yeah. but for the most part at the core of what he believed in was this idea that the Constitution and its limits on government power are what really protect us as a nation. You know, speaking of um, abortion, some of the social issues, almost immediately after hearing this announcement that uh, Kennedy was retiring, you heard uh, people on the left say, well, that's the end of Roe v. Wade. That's it. They're going to be states, you know, the states are going to start to challenge. They're going to start to uh, implement laws that restrict access to abortion because they know whoever uh, is picked to replace him will not, will not, will be open to um, challenging Roe v. Wade. Here's what I think you have to remember about Roe v. Wade. Right. First of all, this has is been... Is it settled law? This has been a scare that's been going all the way back 36 years to 1982 when Sandra Day O'Connor was nominated. Over and over again we've heard this, you know, Roe v. Wade's in jeopardy, nothing's happened to it. There's only one justice on the court right now, only one out of nine, Clarence Thomas, who has said anything about overturning Roe v. Wade. And we know as much about many of those justices, John Roberts, for example, as we knew about Anthony Kennedy when he was appointed to the court. So I think this is really a lot of speculation that's been going on for a long time, and that's not what's important. What's really important is looking for people like Neil Gorsuch who are going to interpret the laws that's written and who are going to respect the political process and respect the proper role of our judge in a society. Um, did you hear Chuck Schumer yesterday? 
I did a little say bit. that it was uh, the height of hypocrisy for Republicans to try and replace Justice Kennedy right before the midterm elections. What do you say to that? Well, it's all about the Constitution. The Constitution gives the president the power of appointment, and that's why during a presidential election year, so close to an election, you let the people decide. But this is not a presidential election year. It's a Senate election year, and it's a very different ballgame. Leonard Leo, thank you very much. Well, thank you. Good to be here.